From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, I'm looking forward to this discussion, and it's going to be a big one, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended, but uh, again, I think we had another uh, good topic here. And before we do, we wanted to recognize um, Ben Woodruff. Um, he is the technical support uh, senior professional at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And he commented on episode 56 and gave us a whole bunch of great ideas about um, what to do when you're adapting your standards. Um, please take a listen to that episode. And Ben, thank you for your feedback. Uh, a lot of what he said was doing documentation in a bunch of different forms um, and also uh, making sure that you are providing testing and and that uh, what you're doing works and is is proven. And, and then lastly, he had an interesting comment, which uh, I think pertained to more than one episode about being able to not be afraid to share information and uh, have somebody else who can take over your role because that's one way to be able to advance instead of looking at it as being replaced. So thank you, Ben, for that. And we appreciate you listening and providing feedback. So as we alluded at the top, um, one of the things that we often um, encounter these days is the need to be able to tackle a big project. So uh, uh, James, I know you're um, in your new role, you're doing a, a new build and there's going to be a whole uh, a whole lot of AV and technology in, in the, the building that you're doing. And um, I've, I've done several where you can't look at um, programming from a, a single room or a single space or even a single code set. You have to look at how do I approach this project with a bigger picture view. Um, I have a bunch of thoughts about that, but one of the comments that I, we could start with is that um, in this case, sometimes you need to have a team of programmers and sometimes within that team, people have to have different roles. So there, we, we found that you need to have somebody who is the project manager. He could be a programmer, but he also, he has to act more so as a project manager, you may also need somebody who's an architect that kind of defines the direction and, and the, the foundation of how the systems are going to be programmed. Um, what's, what's your experience and, and also maybe some of your expectations um, when you're working on a big project like that? So I would say the most important thing for a big project like this is it's for any project, but I would say it's even more important for a large project is having at least one person, it's gonna be your programmer or it's gonna be your project manager or whatever, who is really taking in the consideration of the experience of the user. If we are focusing on one room, that experience is, you kind of understand what the experience is going to be. But if you're looking at a whole building, you have to look at how is a whole experience in this building or project? And is it actually what the user is looking for? Like, can a user go from room to room to room and have the same experience, even though the rooms might be functionally different? Um, so that I think is a very vital, especially in a large project where you have, you might have a hundred rooms that you're working on, especially if you have different programmers, are you providing the same experience for your user? So, so following up on that, is that a specific person that takes that role in, in your eyes? Is it just part of the process? Um, and, and is it something also that, um, how, how does that get transferred to, to, you know, to other people? I, I think that really, you need one person on that. Um, it's hard to put it on one person, but I think if you put too many hands in the pot, you get confusing. Um, so someone who can oversee and understand what the user is really trying to do. I think that's where a good PM comes in. Um, but having that PM who knows the programming 
or is a programmer might be good or having your lead programmer being the point of contact who will oversee all the room's code just to make sure that they are all look the same and feel the same. Um, I think that's how you have to do. You could have 25 programmers, you know, each do a room, but I think you need that one person who sit there and will go over all those rooms individually and say, is this the same experience? Yeah, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there because the, not having a consistent experience is, is a big fail. You know, if we, and so if we flip that a little bit, um, even though the client doesn't see the back end, um, there should be some consistencies there, I believe, as well. Um, and, and I'm going to take the uh, assumption that this is a big enough project that it's probably not a, um, a, a good idea for it to be only one programmer from a logistics standpoint. So being able to have multiple programmers work on a project uh, is is also, I think, uh, a specific technique that is a, needs needs its own attention and and is something that has to be developed and and, um, and and managed by someone. So, is that also that person, or do you, is there somebody else th that you think uh, like has the is going to have that foresight. Uh, you know, I look at it as, you know, that's your architect. That's the guy who says, we're going to, I'm, I'm, this is the way we're going to do things and everybody's going to take their own piece of it. And, and that person's going to be responsible for tying them together. I, I think that's a good lead technician or lead programmer um, who will give the framework of what the whole project's going to be and allowing each individual programmer the freedom to program their way within that framework to give that experience. Um, I think your lead programmer, lead technician um, would be the person there. It may not be the one who's overseeing, making sure that the experience is the same, but the one who's making sure that the project is meeting the scope and providing the proper framework for all the programmers. So that, that's where I guess, so we, we, we probably um, tagged like three or four people by now. So that, that's where it starts to get a little bit tricky. And, I, and I'm, that excites me personally, because I think now we're starting to get into the big leagues and we're starting to make what we do a lot, lot more universal and a lot, lot more software uh, development driven than just having a person do a bunch of systems and and it being done to that one person's uh, uh, perspective. So I, to me, that, that's where it gets kind of exciting. And, uh, and, and that's where you could start to put in different software development principles. And, and you have to start doing code check-ins. And you have to start you know, ha having your, um, your team meetings and so forth. It, it's, um, it, it, to me, we, we're, we're now graduating to a bigger league when we're doing something in that, at that level. I'll agree. This is your <clears throat> getting into something like this really shows the value that a programmer can bring. Um, Cause as you said, especially in the AV well realm, it's not likely a lot of people have a team of programmers, unless you're a third party programming house. Normally you are the only guy with the laptop in the space, coding all the spaces. And that could be beneficial, but then again, it's a lot on one person, you know, that one person, as we just said, could be a PM doing the PM, doing the framework for the code, writing the code, making sure the user experience is all the same. That's a lot to put on one person. And it's a lot to be able to find one person that has that expertise. Yes. So, so I think that it's kind of the road that I was hoping we would get down, you know, before we wrap up is um, now we start to look at how do we mesh uh, an internal team and an external team perhaps, or, or you have, or, or, or being able to tie together different resources to, to get the outcome that you're looking for. Um, I, have not had that experience personally, but I think that that's likely where our industry is going. Um, 
and and it, and it and my thought is is it should be something that involves internal staff who's going to end up having to be in be uh, a part of the support down the road or doing updates or so forth. So uh, the, having that that crossover or that that um, ability to weave in the handoff is I, I think critical. I agree. And that's where relationships come in key. Um, it's hard for us programmers, as we mentioned, we we tend to be say to ourselves, we'll say within our little click. Um, but when we get out and we build those relationships, you know, with those external clients and their external parties and stakeholders, we uh, we branch out and we can make sure that our projects are meeting the needs of our users. Yeah. I think it's probably a good place for us to wrap this one, but I'm curious to hear also from those of you out there, uh, what, what's your experience been? Um, how do you approach larger projects these days? They definitely require a plan and they definitely are better suited to having multiple people. So what does that look like? And, and also how do we, uh, how do we cross over between internal and external people? So I, I, I think that's a great conversation for us to, to continue with and to uh, get some feedback on. Um, so please, please let us know what, what you're doing or what you're thinking. Um, James, how do people get in touch with you and know what you're up to and read what you're writing? Oh, as always, you can find me on Twitter, AV underscore James King. You can find my writing on the Higher Ed Digital Magazine website where I write the IT and AV column, a member of HEPMA. So it's, uh, I'm out there. You can find me. And for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media and LinkedIn and Twitter, probably where I uh, can be most easily found. And I'd love to connect uh, with more people in our audience. I uh, do some writing for AV Network and also my company blog at controlconcepts.net. So please check those out and let me know what you think. And uh, what's most important to us is that uh, you can share an episode or leave a comment or uh, give us a review. We uh, want to do more to get engaged with the audience and especially as things are turning more to in-person events, hopefully we could see more of you out there. So uh, please let us know and uh, we want to keep this uh, running strong. So. Um, that's what we have for today. And this has been Ask the Programmer.